So I've said we have seen this whole thing of hot dogs. In Uzumba, there were hot dogs there. <coughs> Just yesterday, they did a funny thing in in, in Bobby, You know, uh, they chased uh, after our our, our convoy. We had to find ways of uh, uh, blocking them through our security teams. They had guns, AK-47s, uh, and of course they almost spent one year. But I understand that July was also part of that delegation. What shocks me is that we have government ministers who are behaving like little thugs. I don't understand it. They literally incite violence, sponsor violence, coordinate violence, which is unfortunate, very unfortunate. What we would want is to insist on peace. As I indicated, rural areas have become centers of mass victimization, intimidation, and terror against citizens, particularly those who are in the alternative. I've seen that our chiefs are in trouble, village heads are in trouble. They are being subjected to incessant harassment, 24 hour surveillance. Food from government, support from government is weaponized. Hence, it has become commonplace in the rural areas. Violence has also become a big issue. But what I also heard, which is very disturbing, is that those who have always been violent are also dying mysterious deaths. Particularly in Uzumba, I was told that all those ZANU PF people who were very instrumental in 2008 in the violence and before have all died in mysterious circumstances. It was something that we celebrate. It's an unfortunate thing. We don't want those kinds of things. But that is what is happening. Food, as I said, is weaponized. The human rights situation in the country has gotten to another level. What is clear is that the subject of the matter is human rights. You go to the villages, people do not have access to basic services on account of a party that they are alleged to belong to. I also got the information that issuance of party identity cards is being done by party leadership, ZANU PF party leadership in the various areas. Why is this being done? Because they want to do regimented voting, command voting. That has become a big issue. And this is why Mr. Mahadi has been going around the, the country addressing crow heads and village heads. In Kabuna alone, we have about 1,908 village heads. The whole country over 35,000. And Mr. Mohadi has been addressing all of them. He's not addressing them to encourage them, to empower them. He's ad addressing them to intimidate them and to threaten them that they should not allow triple C activities or the citizen movement to do things. They've localized violence, they've localized things, and to make sure that they also stop it. I was being told just this morning that, like I said, in Toko, they were saying, oh, Chamisa will not come in here, will not allow him. Uh, I want to say this to Zanubi. I will go anywhere and everywhere. You will not stop me. You are not the owners of this land. Zimbabwe belongs to Zimbabwe. Mr. Mnangagwa, the violence that has been reported is completely a declaration against the citizens. But history tells us that citizens always come first and come out best. And they always win, and we shall. We want to urge our police officers and security agents to continue to do their legal and lawful duty to protect the citizens, defend the law, and protect the country as guaranteed by the Constitution. As a citizen movement, I must emphasize, we are against all violence, threats, cohesion, and as a government in waiting, we are patriotic, ready, as peace champions, focusing on the bread and butter issues, the answers that are going to bring solutions to the people of Zimbabwe as we inspire people to vote for change. Where there is discord, we continue to bring harmony. And where there is error, we bring correction. Where there is doubt, we bring faith. Where there is rottenness, we are bringing freshness and change. And where there is despair, we bring hope. We will not be drawn into very deliberate attempts to invite us into violence. We have seen the temptation, we have seen the machinations of Zanubia. <coughs> they want us to descend into violence so that they can then justify 
a state of emergence, justify, then their tomfoolery, justify their macho tactics and their violence. But we will not allow them that violence. We will remain peaceful. We will remain maintaining peace. A lot of people have been saying, but Mr. Chamisa, we can't be beaten, you know, with our hands tied behind our back. I say, peace is fragile. Peace comes at a cost. Our high road is a high road to democracy. Mr. Changrai would always say, I will never walk on dead bodies to state us. I would repeat the same statement. Because I know that our road and journey to state us is assured. So why would we lose a single life on account of politics? That will not happen. Let me also comment just on the issue of the economy and corruption. We note with concern that the economy continues to fail many Zimbabweans, but this is due to spectacular mismanagement and endemic corruption. If you look at what I have stated before, the economy is failing on account of bad leadership and bad governance. Look at how Zimbabweans are being treated in the neighboring countries. Like people without identity, without a heritage, without a, a, a nation and land, but each year, the country is losing three billion, both to illicit flaws and plunder of money through corruption that is taking <coughs> place instead on the institutions by the admission of the state organs themselves. Ironically, in gold alone, the country has lost about 100 million every time, which amounts to our monthly requirements for medical drugs in our hospitals. 1.8 billion that is lost through our illicit financial flows is enough to pay a salary bill of the entire civil service, paying them $500 per month. Currently, you know, the price basket is about 140000 But if you look at what the civil servants are getting, they're getting peanuts. They can't make ends meet. That is the same story with all our people who are in the various uh, professions across the various sectors. Having said this, one would say, but what would you say about the electoral environment in the country? Let me just say that in terms of our elections in the country, what is clear is that ZANU PF is now engaged in a systematic attempt to try and reverse their defeat, which is inevitable in 2023. They are trying to manipulate electoral processes and outcomes, take the, the constitutional and electoral bodies with their own people, but will not allow them. It's a fight that we are going to undertake. What we need to see is the entrenchment of the SADC AU protocols, the values and principles of elections that are supposed to be embarked on. And I repeat, what they are doing is illegal and constitutional in terms of all the statutes within the country in the region and on the continent. The fees that they've charged are unacceptable. They want to make democracy a commodity, commodify elections, bring elections outside and out of the reach of many people. The appointment of commissioners has to be an agreed matter. It takes two to tango. They can't tango alone and will not allow them to tango. What are we going to do about it? We have already instituted a number of measures. Engagement of SADC is one of them. But also locally, we are engaging all the key stakeholders to make sure that there's a collective voice around this matter. There's going to be a free and fair election in 2023, and we'll have to make sure that that election becomes a possibility. If there's no free and fair election in Zimbabwe, what it tells you is that the problems in our country will never come to an end. Now, I was telling some leaders within the region that the immigration crisis, as it is called, in the Southern African Development Committee, is not an immigration crisis. It is indeed a governance crisis in Zimbabwe. People are running out of this country on account of a deficit of good governance, the economic circumstances that they find themselves in, and if we don't resolve those, we will not be able to move forward. So I've given a couple of suggestions to our colleagues in South Africa, to also give a moment and an opportunity to the people of Zimbabwe so that there is a, a, some kind of a breathing space 
for them as we fix our own situation in this country. We can't call Zimbabweans criminal because certain individuals in South Africa who are Zimbabwean have been criminal. You don't label and condemn the entire country on account of a few individuals who may have, unfortunately because of their own circumstances, have done something that is criminal. Let me conclude by saying, victory is certain. I've seen Mr. Mnangagwa yesterday, he was uh, in Mashana Lane Central, where people at the church, or allegedly at the church, were singing about Chamisa this, Chamisa this, Chamisa that. I want to thank Mr. Mnangagwa for being my big campaign manager. He's doing a fantastic job. You know, the only unfortunate thing is that he has taken his campaign to places that he's not supposed to, the church. I don't mind what the devil says about me. But I would be worried if the devil says something good about me. And as I have stated, state house is not heaven. We can't fight for power just for the sake of power. We are not fighting for power. We are fighting for change. We are fighting for values. We are fighting for a better life. We are fighting for dignity and peace. Not just for citizens in, in the triple C, but also for Zanubia. Our fight is not a partisan fight. It is a national fight. We need a new consensus as a people. Beyond the liberation consensus, we need to come together in the transformational consensus. Work together and transform our fortunes as a people, as a country. And that's why we have said we count on our veterans. They are being abused. They are being used as an extension of a political party. They are not an extension of any political party. They can't be a wing of any political party. They belong to Zimbabwe. They are custodians, guardians, and defenders, as well as guarantors of our ideals as a liberation nation. It's like the chiefs, custodians of our culture, tradition, and heritage. Don't abuse them into politics. Having said, I'm so excited by what I'm seeing in the countryside. People are so determined. They are saying victory is certain. They are saying we are going to win by a big money, and we will win big. And I see 2023 as an opportunity for people to come together, unite, and win big as citizens. Some are saying, hey, it doesn't make a sense you know, for us to go and participate in voting. Let me tell you this. Those who discourage you from participating in voting know the power of your vote. This is why they are discouraging you. This is why they say even if you vote, we will rig. It will not change things. Hey, I think this is a ballpoint. They know that the vote counts, the vote matters. That is why they want to discourage you, disempower you. You are the masters, they are the servants. Politicians cannot be the ones who wag the body or the dog. We are the tail that should be wagged by the citizens. So please, citizens, take charge. Citizens, register to vote. Young people, this is your time, this is your nation. Make it. If you don't, you break it. Thank you very much. We thank our change champion in chief very much. Uh, without further ado, we're going to take a few questions. As usual, may you please identify yourself, give us your name, the news house you're coming from, and ask one question.